Să zic, zic și să ne îngemăm. K20A2 engine at the Civic EB3 Type R and down here we have the throttle body a number of sensors on it this is the TPS sensor I think we've got an EVAP purge solenoid as well as a map sensor you can see underneath there but underneath all of this is um, what I'm actually interested in and this is the idle air control valve uh, you can't see it at the moment but I'll show you that once I get some things removed. So first things first, I'm going to remove this to uh, 10 mils, which is just a little kind of cover, beauty cover or whatever. And, um, and then this will reveal what I'm actually working with out the way there. Now I need to remove everything that's going to stop me from getting the throttle body out. Um, it's going to be unclipping sensors. So EVAP purge. Let's see if I can do that. There you go. This is the map sensor, that's out there, um, TPS, I'll try and undo that, I don't know how, two big hands or something, somehow I'll get in there, uh, maybe I'll take this um, line out and do this, I think that's IAT, so the intake air temp, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what it is. And then just uh, unplug stuff like this, um, and I'll take this off next. So if you pull out of there, pull this out of here, freeze that up, and I'm going to just undo these two Jubilee clips and take this out. One tip I'd give is you can get pipes off like this by just getting a flathead screwdriver and just pulling back against it to the side and to the side and to the front. And then if you pull that back, um, you'll be able to easily get off. Um, the pipe rather than just pulling on it and then potentially ripping it so and also what I've noticed is there's been some bodge jobs going on some sticker flex sticker flex here I don't want to touch it too much because I think someone's basically snapped or broken something sticker flex here to the air box um, I knew about that one before but I didn't know about that bloody hell anyway um, so that's off there and done these pipes here this should be pretty much free to come off it's just got this little bracket below holding that on there we go that's off just rest that down here and now we're looking at the throttle body a bit better and I should be able to come down and take off the connector to the TPS somehow here we go the little buttons at the front there we go that's all off and then I want to um, take this little um, connector, this little rubber pipe off. So I'll get some pliers on that and pull that line off there. And I'll also have to get a spanner, I think it's 12 mil, and undo the throttle cable. And we should be ready to come off. There might even be something below as well, but I think there's even two pipes here. These are probably full of water. Uh, coolant, so I have to undo that as well. Get my long nose needle pliers on that pipe that goes to the lower middle of the throttle body ends up at this um, this part here um, next to the kind of coolant neck, I guess you'd call it. Um, so I've taken that off, and I've also taken the one off there, which goes to the lower part. Um, it's always preferable just to take off if it's a uh, pipe that's in the kind of restricted area take off the one that's easiest to see um, so that's what I've done and uh, some coolant came out but I've caught that so that's all right and now I just need to go down here and you see there's another plug which I'll need to remove um, just this big black plug there so um, it was easy enough but you just got to push this side and then using a flathead screwdriver you can just get on this little tab thing there and uh, just pull it back, that was easy enough. Then I'm going to get this 12mm on this throttle cable, trying to keep the position of uh, where it's stopped at. So, 
I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So, 12 mil, back that off. And what I'm going to do is leave that bottom nut where it is and just undo this one. And then in that way, I won't change my position. So then plug, go back round with this. And uh, what I'm going to do is two hands, is just tighten this top nut onto the bottom one, then I won't change my position like that. So then I can take that off and I know that that hasn't changed. This might be a little bit hard to see, but um, here's the throttle cable off. What you do is you wind it round and you can just uh, and get a good position on it. Push uh, the back of this out. It's going to be hard to see this. but. Here we go. So move that round here, up there, and then just take that out. And I can just take that out of the way there. And I think we're at the point now, it's worth checking, but uh, we're at the point now we can just undo this whole throttle body. And I think these are going to be 12 mils, four of them. One, two, one below there, three. One below there, four. Take the whole throttle body off. It's a mixture of nuts and bolts there. Just take this off. If I just, you put your hand right underneath it and then pull. Don't pull against any of these sensors or anything. But you'll be able to just take it off. And uh, with two hands I will get it off. There okay, go guys, 100,000 miles. This is the condition of it. I will clean the throttle plate up a bit. That isn't really my chief concern. It's this idle air control valve which I need to take off. So, take this into the garage and let's have a clean up. The idea at this point just to cover um, your inlet or put something in your inlet so that nothing goes in there because it's going to ruin your day. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this uh, motor. So, for the idle air control valve, it's a T20. And just be very careful, it's a five pointed star. And just be very careful taking it off and just kind of removing it without stripping it as you're going to have to cut a slot on it or something. So you can undo these both fully and take them out. Bolts both the same, come out, and that leaves me the idle air control valve motor. Should be free to come out pretty much. Okay, it'll only go on one way. So as long as I leave that flat going towards the centre, um, we should be all good and now I'm going to uh, leave that where it is I'm going to take I'm going to turn this over do you notice I've got it in the uh, soft jaws of the vise I don't want to damage it and I don't want to damage this gasket because I've got another one um, then I'm going to try and undo these two be very careful when taking these out um, it can be a real pain if you uh, strip the head of that so one thing I love to do is this is the impact driver you get the correct um, size uh, bit in the end, set it to left, which is where is it, the arrow there, to left, and then all you do is you lean on it like that, hit the top with a hammer, and what happens is it just has small incremental movements and shocks it off, and what you can see is I've managed to undo both of the little screws that hold this on, and I'm going to do that for the uh, other uh, map sensor as well. So take these out first and I'll be able to remove this. Now these two uh, screws are out. I can turn my attention back to this. I should be able to take this straight off, which I have done. And then this is the contentious part. Put it here. Get the light on the matter. This should be free to, rota to rotate. So if I just show you not it's stuck or sticking so what I need to do is uh, free this up with a bit of cleaner a bit of brake cleaner I think or some carb cleaner see what I've got but uh, see in there it's got a little turning bit that should be free to rotate it's not may or may not be a little bit easier to show in the light but you can see here 
a little turny thing. It's barely turning at all, it's so stiff. And then so I'm gonna get some brake cleaner, shove them there, see if I can't free this up. It's starting to free off a bit. What I've noticed is a bit of some lines here. And let's see what happens if I get my friendly old toothbrush and uh, just try and clean that up a bit more. As I get got down in there and uh, she scraped some of this kind of black cat off with this little scraper I got. I didn't mark it, so don't worry about that, but it's much freer to turn now. Um, not great, but um, I think if this doesn't work or goes bad again, I'm, what I'm going to have to do is make an even better effort to clean it, or alternatively I might just have to buy a new one, but they're about £200 in the British currency, so but you can see it's better than it was and I uh, think it's going to be a matter of that's as good as it gets at least it's not sticking now so the motor won't have such an effort to try and turn it um, and then what I can do is go in and uh, I might take the map sensor out on the EVAP from here that's all of the bolts on there anyway um, so that looks pretty fresh in there but I'm going to try and take out the um, EVAP and the map sensor and give the throttle body a bit of a clean while I'm here. Technique again, I've managed to free all of these uh, quite nicely. I need to do that one a bit more, it's a bit stiff still. But uh, And then I'll be able to take all of these out. But these are out of there. It's the map and the EVAP. And I'm going to go and give this a good clean. You can see why I took the map out. You don't want to get all of this crack cack in the... Uh, map sensor so this is all going pretty well it's cleaning up quite nicely and um, if you have a look at this side you can see it's already getting better I'll show you the final result that be a1 but got some of the crap out now i'm just going to build the whole thing back together with the first thing being um this idle air control valve assembly so it's going to put it in like that and make sure i put the um gasket in the same place as before. Gasket in, and I just need to put the uh, start the assembly back on, the actual idle air control valve. So again this has gone from being stuck to being free to turn, so I'm just going to put this where it was, which is there, and then I can put the uh, motor on in the exact same place as it was before. Room for adjustment because they're slotted holes, so what I'm going to try and do is just line up the witness marks that you can barely see. Um, so it's in the same position as it was before. So the T20, which is this, as I said before, five-sided star. Um, that's all done up. Now I can just put in the EVAP and the map sensor, just with again with the crosshead screws. We're all back together. I'm just going to shove it on the car. These uh, two bolts and nuts. And uh, we take out the uh, little stopper I had on there. And place it back in with the map sensor and EVAP facing up. So they're all tight and I've just pushed in this lower um, connector for the idle air control valve, just there where my finger is. Now I'm going to, I think, put on some of the pipes. Um, these will be easiest to put in now. So these water uh, pipes. So I'm gonna put that one in there and I'm going to put the other one in just where my finger is there. So this one goes onto there, and this one up there. And these little spring clip things on there. Helps to have one finger behind there and just get them in place. The TPS or throttle position sensor connectors in there. And then next is putting this uh, pipe in through a faff, but I just put the clip that holds the radiator upper pipe on. Then you'll know you're the whole way home when you've got these little tabs in with there. And this tap on the air, tap on the airbox up there to just done up with a 10 mil with that and that they're done and then it's just a matter of just buttoning everything else up so here we have this little pipe that was out the way there pushes on there and I can just work this little um, retainer thing on there get some pliers on there push it to there and then this um, that's for the EVAP, so just get that in there. This goes in here, this little kind of wiring and holder, and then this for the map 
that's in there and down here that holds there and then up here we have this is for the I think the IAT idle intake temperature connect that in there put that in the little hold of it and we are almost there so like I say just put that to there and then this little connector goes on the little pipe goes on here so that's in there like that um, and then finally um, the throttle a cable so I'll just wind that in there show you what that's like when it's done but basically all you do is you push that um, little end of the uh, cable in and then just loop it back round here and then just undo this uh, bolt which you've wound down to there leaving this bottom one in place and then you can just put the um, throttle cable back in exactly where it was and 12 mm just does that up. thing is just to put this um, cover on so you just put Got this little pointy bit in there and then just put these uh, two shiny head screws on there and do it all back up. So all back in one piece and I'm going to have to let you know if it all works and I don't have any more idle fluctuation. You uh, lost a little bit of coolant so it's best to put a little bit of coolant back in um, so you're at the right level. Push up to temp and it uh, seems like my idle's sorted so that seems to all have worked but for how long will be another matter.